because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never shut, shut up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're in Manchester, and I have just dropped an absolute stinker, right? I mean, Joe, for people that don't know, we have just done a minute of gold content. It was right? absolute golden. I told you that, that Coogan Cassius was over here watching you like a schoolboy. Oh, I said, no. you got no mojo. Get up, Joey boy! And that, look. Look, I'm even deflated now. Yeah, I'm even deflated, right? I'm going to do right. a fake get up, but no, no, it's not worth no. it. It's not. The absolute vibe's gone. I've just dropped the biggest stinker. And the job. And your job. I, I think it's on the ropes after probably, now. Probably. Look, look at that. Anne's going. Anne's going. Coogan Cassius was bringing me in something about Bob Arrow mugging me off. Hang on, let's get. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Right, so I did want to get your reaction to this, but it's we just literally just come in. But let, let's, let's watch it and get your kind of live reaction to someone else in America that don't basically someone, like you. I mean, it's some, it's, it's traditional. Right. Yeah. Right, there we go. I've been saying that for years. Last one from me, Bob, because I know you're a busy That's Colin man, McGuigan. You're in Belfast. Eddie Hearn has came to the US. He's kind of said that, you know, he's taken over the game in terms of promoting. He says that in the US he's doing the biggest shows. He's obviously just signed Edgar Berlanga, who left top rank. What do you make of Eddie's business in the US at the moment? Well, you know, among the boxing people in the United States, Eddie is a joke. Really a joke, a clown. You know, he's taken the, the zone money and... Uh, have uh, a big campfire with the money. Uh, uh, even uh, Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy on the same platform has outshone uh, Eddie. So I don't take Eddie very seriously. But yeah, I, uh, gee, I don't take any promoter who is so braggadocious and really doesn't deliver seriously. But in Eddie's own mind, he's the greatest thing that ever lived. That is true. Well, Bob, Hold on. thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Hold on. Hold that a sec. Well, All right, not man. being funny. Thank you. When we talk about boxing. Shown, uh, Eddie. Right. So I don't take Eddie very seriously. Who do you reckon? Uh, Who do you reckon's winning? Who do you reckon's got the bigger future in boxing? So Who do you prefer as a promoter? Anyway. Braggadocious. I like braggadocious. I like braggadocious. I am braggadocious. But I don't... What I can't understand is, yeah, he, like, what he's saying is, is that everybody in America thinks I'm a joke. I mean, I promote Canelo Alvarez. We've just done 50,000 in Guadalajara. I did Canelo Triple G last year. I did Canelo Bivol. We sold out Madison Square Garden with Katie Taylor. He's just done the biggest fight that he's done for years and years and years is Haney Lomachenko. Did 150,000 buys. Top rank have no big fights. But I'm going to ask you a question. What's the last big fight top rank done? Who can answer that question? Apart from Haney Loma. Not even a big fight. Did 150,000 buys. But if you want to call Haney Loma a mega fight, right? Undisputed title fight. Okay. When was the last one before that? Does anybody? Anyone? Yeah, Fury no, fight. It's not really, it's a Queensbury show. Come on, you can't just. Um, okay, so when was the last mega fight that they did for Fury? Chisora. Sam Jones. You just said Chisora. Sam Jones. All right. No, right. Okay, by the way, so at the moment we're stuck on this. You've got Tiafimo Lopez against Josh Taylor in the theatre at Madison Square Garden. They can't even sell that out. It's got 4,000 seats. Top rank are completely finished. Bob Aram calls me a joke, and what was it, braggadocious? Not being funny. Done. Over. End of story. ESPN contract, gone. I have got to say something, though. Yesterday, when Coogan said, what are the top three promoters yeah. in the world, you put top rank up there. In America, I said, in America, they are number two after me. Well, then, what? So everyone else is done apart from you? Pretty much. I mean, PBC, are, you look at the financials, PBC, done. Well, you couldn't, you, you know, uh, I'm telling you now. They've just put on Terence Crawford and Spence. Yeah, but, but you look at them as a business. 
You've got all their star fighters fighting once every 18 months. Yeah. I've always said I give props to top rank. In terms of promotional companies, they are a good promotional company. Show me the big fights that a top rank are putting on. They're not putting on any big fights at all. They're trying to, you know, to, to use their budget to make the financials look positive. They're finished. They're not going to get their ESPN renewal at all. And they're not putting any mega fights on anymore. The biggest fight of the year was Haney Lomachenko, 150,000 buys. And next up is Tia Fimo against Josh Taylor. In the theatre, they can't even sell that out. It's 4,000 seats. We've got Edgar Belanga outselling them there. Do you think he's a bit salty over losing salty? Edgar? Salty over losing? Bob Arum is the saltiest man on the planet. Saltier than salty. But one thing I do like about Bob Arum is he can completely slate me like he has done there and he could phone me tonight and ask to do a deal with me. Yeah. And I have no problem doing it. I respect Bob Arum because he's a survivor. But he is done. Over. I was going to save this for later, but I'll ask now while we're on the topic. Devin Haney saying he was sleeping the whole fight. He was. But it's, no, but you can't be age. Look, Bob's 93. He's a legend. Like, he's going to fall asleep during fights. It's not, you know, but... Ringside. Yeah, but you can't. He's 92 years old. Like, he's a legend in that respect. I can't, listen... I won't be here at that age. He's still working. It's amazing what he's doing. But do you think that Bob Arum understands the boxing audience? Do you think he understands the way the younger generation digests content, the way they use devices, the way they use streaming and what they want? No. But he is a promotional legend. He did Thriller in Manila. He did Rumble in the Jungle. But you're just a bit moronic if you start saying that I'm, I'm a joke. In a, like, look what I'm doing. I'm outperforming you. If I'm a joke, what are you? What is he? Number two. <laughs> Let's move on. Would Lara, obviously I'm assuming it was a bit of a stressful morning for yourself. Can we just, from your point of view, explain this situation? Because Lara did weigh in at 129.8 yeah. pounds. Yes, so um, throughout the week, there are British Boxing Border Control check weights. Um, this is something that international fighters don't really like but is designed to protect the health and safety of the fighter so what happened was Mauricio Lara check weighed with a British boxing border control and they said we think you're too heavy we are not going to allow you to make championship weight he was upset because he never got the chance to make weight but in their opinion and in the doctor's opinion the weight that he was meant that he would make the championship weight unsafely. I think it's good that the board look out for fighters in that respect. I'm not sure about the validity of check weight so close to a fight because sometimes fighters make weight, hydrate, then make weight again for the weigh-in. So they said to him, you must be 128.6 or higher. So he was disappointed, went away, and he weighed 129.7 or 8, whatever he was. At that point, you go to, obviously there's a then there's the business side, where you go to Maurizio Lara and you say, ultimately, you haven't made weight. There must be some kind of financial punishment for Lee Wood, which Maurizio Lara says, well, I, w I wasn't allowed to make weight. At. It's not my fault. He says, well, it is. You know the check weight numbers from the British Boxing Board of Control. You missed it. Then there was a financial deal to be reached and agreed between Lee Wood and Maurizio Lara. Then there was understanding the weight that he'd be, which was checked, and we knew what weight he'd be. And then there was a decision to be made by Lee Wood and Ben Davison. The WBA made the ruling just after he weighed in. The belt is now vacant. Lee Wood, same applies, chance to become world champion on Saturday night. Maurizio Lara fighting for his career. But will not be world champion if he wins on Saturday. I've just been shown over my shoulder, Ben Davison's just made comments that the fight might not even happen mm. because he come in so heavy. Um, is there any doubt in your mind? No, we had an agreement in place of the, what he would be, which they knew he was, and obviously we'll monitor that. Um, but, yeah, the fight will go ahead. He looked a lot bigger than Lee, would you think? No, he looked much smaller, I thought. I mean, he looked, I mean he's, he's much smaller in yeah, size. But, yeah, but, you know, he couldn't make the weight uh, that was required before the weigh-in. So, um, yeah, uh, I expect a great fight tomorrow. Ben Eubank, have you spoke to Kala since yesterday? Uh, I haven't. Yeah. Our team have. Um, ultimately, you know, we want to make that fight. We're going to try and do everything we can to make that fight. 
Um, we would like to um, make that fight. We think it's the biggest fight for both. We would love to do that fight in the UK. Obviously, that's subject to um, the British Boxing Board of Control and U UCAD's decision, which is ongoing with Conor Ben's lawyers. But for me, that's the fight to make. Ben Shalom seems certain that it could be rescheduled for August. He said that is the fight. Speaking to Frank Smith yesterday, he seemed to think differently. I so from yeah, I don't know. I mean, we received a legal letter last night from Boxer because of something I said in an interview, something about I said that no one cares about Smith Eubank too. They don't. I don't. I don't care about Smith Eubank too. It's a one-sided fight. We don't need to see a rematch. In my opinion, people want to see Ben against Eubank. Um, and hopefully we can get that made. In terms of the reschedulement, in terms of all that kind of stuff, um, you know, I don't know. Frank Smith's dealing with that with, with Callis Allen. As we understand it, Chris Eubank Jr. can take the Conor Ben fight. We'll have to see. Three shows tomorrow night. I know you've had an arrangement with George Warren over BT Ringwalk, but how confident are you that you've got the number one show? Um, I mean, I've seen a lot of polls of which we've won every one of them by a country mile. But they're three good fights. Look, a Coley Billum Smith might not be a great fight to watch, but it's still two Brits fighting for the world for the World Cruiserweight title. Conlon against Lopez, really good fight. Wood against Lara, really good fight. I, I don't you know, I'm always gonna say we've got the best show, but they're three good shows. And you know, we are at a point where many years ago, one one world title fight in three months in Britain would be an achievement. It's three on one night. It's not ideal, but it does show you the depth of British boxing now and the competition that's out there, which can only be good for fans and hopefully... You know, and also, when you talk about schedules and venues and stuff like that, when a broadcaster comes to you and says, we want to go May 27th or, or whatever, or Sky say, we need the Bournemouth Stadium, and Bournemouth come back to you and say, the only date we can do is May 27th because we're digging up the pitch. It's tough shit. We couldn't get in Nottingham, you know, and we could only get in Manchester on the 27th. And, you know, that was the date that um, the zone wanted coming off the back of Katie Taylor and they wanted to pack the schedule out. So here we are. I know yesterday you kind of rubbished the uh, Tyson Fury in Australia kind of rumours, but have you had any indication from Saudi from obviously who you're speaking to over this December date if Tyson is playing ball and if it looks like he will be part of that? I think they'd want him to. I'm not, I'm not involved in those discussions, but um, you know, I think uh, they want to make it happen. So therefore, they'll, they'll attempt to do so. Uh, you know, the, the 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 Australian stuff. I hope it's true. I wish it was. I'd love him to fight Dempsey McKean. I think it's a good fight, but I just I can't see it. So we'll see what happens. K2 win the purse bids mm. for Alexander Usyk versus. Daniel Dubois, it goes the same day as your AJ planned. So is that going to change things? No, AJ will fight August 12th at the moment yeah. in the UK. And um, you know, we'll see who that will be against. If he doesn't fight in August or if it isn't Dillian White, have you got any other plans for Dillian? Uh, no, that's the focus for Dillian White is to fight Anthony Joshua. But he wants to fight. You know, whether, he, he doesn't care whether he fights AJ next or whoever. But at the moment, that's our preferred opponent. What's next for Fabio? Will he defend his British title in the summer? I expect, you know, I talked with George Warren yesterday about the David Adelaide fight because the board will order David Adelaide to fight Fabio Wardley. I think David Adelaide fights in June. Uh, Fabio will fight in July. And then those two will meet in the autumn. So brilliant fight, brilliant fight. And, um, you know, talking to George about how we can make that happen. Last one, what are you doing on Sunday? Sunday, uh, think playing golf. Why? What are you thinking? I'll tell you what you should be doing, mate. Right. You should be watching the new IFL podcast, Talk Smart with Pure McCart. There you go. You've heard of it? No, Andrew McCart's podcast. With myself, Pure McCart. Right, okay, that sounds massive. And who's on? Myself and Andy. How about anyone decent? Um, do you want to come on? No, it's just you two, is it? Potentially some guests. So it's a podcast with you and Andrew McCart. Well, I'm still getting over the IFL podcast, which they play the trailer. It's so annoying. I'm going to think I have to mute IFL's Instagram because You're it's. On it, you yeah, I know I'm on it, but I didn't want to see myself as much as I love seeing myself. Oh, you'll be replaced with Ben Shalom next season, anyway. Ooh. Ooh. Where's Parsons when you need him? <laughs> so you don't want to give Pure McCart a little plug for Sunday? Okay, 
fight fans, there's only one place to. I can't. I can't even. It was seven thirty last week. I can't even do this with any passion because you've got to believe in what you're selling. But anyway, no fight, passion, no point, okay. Eddie. Come on. Fight fans, there is only one place to be on Sunday night, eight p.m. Pew and McCart, the new boxing podcast. Levels above anything you've ever seen before. Well, it has to be levels above the IFL podcast, to be fair. But whatever you're doing on Sunday night, I know eight o'clock, there's not a lot to do. So just give them a try, will you? They're not very talented. Two reasonably nice fellas. I don't know what they actually do. I don't even think they've got any guests on. It probably ain't going to be that great, but give it a whirl. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never, never shut, shut up, Barry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day.